كم تبلغ من العمر وما اسمك؟ How old are you and what is your name? I'm 26 and my name is Amy. Amy. Yeah. Amy. Yeah. I'm 31 and my name is Grant. My name is Ahmed. Yes. This is Ahmed. He lives in these mountains. These are his sheep. He's also 31 and he's all about honoring people, helping people, not charging them any money. So good. Nice to meet you, Ahmed. <laughs> he was saying like some Canadians come here and they took, they stay with him. I said, oh, you should charge them for it. He's like, no, no, we ain't do it because we honor them. We don't charge them anything. You just forget that people don't care about money. It's just that we always say business minded in the West. <laughs> One thing he said to us was, all tourists are welcome. They, you know, we love to meet all different nations. We're like, oh yeah, meet us too. And then he goes away again and starts talking into his app. And then the little app, computerized voice goes, except for the Israelis. We were like, okay. <laughs> okay, quite shocking. <laughs> he did smile when he said it. I don't think he was being particularly vindictive, but there we go. Obviously there's quite a lot of history. In fact, as I told you the other day, the other side of the Red Sea, sorry, Dead Sea, um, used to be Jordan um, until the Israelis took it in the 70s, I think. And then in 93, they signed a, a peace deal. So they do maintain peaceful relations despite the tensions. Um, but also in our first homestay sort of suggested that there's corruption in the government and it's linked to the Israelis. So there's quite a lot of suspicion and mistrust between the Israelis and obviously the Jordanians. We just can't believe that people live up here. It's just wild. Like, I was just, just saying, it was a 10 minute drive from down there. Yeah, 10 minute drive from down there. It's like luxury resorts to people living in tents. It's, it's quite bizarre. It's just, you know, Looking after your goats and your sheep. These people are all so happy that we come across. Living in the mountains. Yeah, they're all so yeah, friendly. Yeah. But I mean, can you imagine living in a little tent up here? He's French. Right? A bit worried that uh, we're going to get flash flooding today. Jordan's quite famous for flash flooding. And in these valleys, not so much up here, but lower in the, in well, the valleys. In a place like that. Maybe. When you follow those rivers down, you can get flash flooding quite quickly. And there's mm. no vegetation here. So there's a lot of runoff. Vegetation slows it down. Uh, it makes the land into more of a sponge, whereas this turns into like a, you know, a sort of a, a muddy um, landslide. Got the rain covers on our bags. The rain's coming down the valley. You can see little Bedouin tribes sprinkled here and there. The Dead Sea? But otherwise, it's getting very Martian. Go on, Amy, do it again. She's doing like she's on Mars. So she's pretending she's in less lower gravity. It's really hard with a really heavy backpack. The tent is definitely waterproof. Yeah. See that the vents are tight. What? The vents. And the vents work. We're not wet. Yay! Bit of a miserable morning this morning. Just makes everything so much harder if it's cold and wet. That's just mud. This place is a quagmire. It's like the Somme. Onwards and upwards. Suddenly got very windy. Very windy. That's heading towards us on top of a mountain. Not good. We jumped in a cave to escape the storm. But the cave we're in is in the middle of a riverbed, it appears. So we're at real risk of flash flooding. It's also hailing. So we're going to have to get out of here before we get trapped in here. Ah! We were in there, in that cave. You can see how quickly the water started to run there. That's what we've got to watch out for. Now we're into some higher ground. The storm seems to have blown over. So it's just a temporary storm, but you can see how quickly these turns get uh, dangerous. It's cold as well, we're wet now. Yeah. 
These are not the conditions you expect to encounter when you set out on the Jordan Trail. Cold and wet. Unexpectedly hard, eh? She just puts herself into the sleeping bag, which is what I do as well, because it's freezing. It's so cold, and the problem is it's not even dark yet. Yeah, I didn't make it very far, and I got soaked. My um, down jacket got wet, so it's kind of dangerous, this actually, because um, when you get wet and it's cold, that's when hypothermia starts to set in. We're pretty dry in the tent, but yeah, uh, if the sleeping bag gets wet, which hopefully it won't, um, I don't actually really have any other way to stay warm because um, my jacket's wet. The problem with down is down doesn't retain heat when it gets wet. It's the one sort of shortcoming of down, unlike wool, which generates heat. So yeah, I mean, the other option is uh, if you start to get really cold, is to literally walk it off, you know, get moving. But the problem is um, we've got quite a long way forward to the town we're going to, which is called Faku. Um, it's going to be an interesting night. We're at quite a lot of elevation. I'll try and show you. Great camera work, as always. I don't know if you can see anything then, because I couldn't. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting night. So this gentleman, I just asked him if he's ever seen hyena. You say hyena, hyena's here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So you're saying that down here. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's telling me to make sure I get the landscaping properly. Ah, down here. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, down here. Perfect. So embarrassing. I can't need to step over in front of a shepherd. You're going the wrong way. He has to stop you walking off the edge of a cliff. But welcome back, viewers. Yep. Welcome back. <laughs> As you can see, conditions have changed ever, ever so slightly. <laughs> it's now 30 degrees, but kind of counterintuitively, that works quite well for us. <laughs> Unlike what you might expect, because obviously we live in Australia. All of our hiking experience really comes from Australia. So we're actually much more uh, well suited to hiking in extreme heat than we are in the cold and the wet. So we're now in the sort of mountainous landscape just to the east of the Dead Sea called the Wadi Mujib. Wadi, I believe, is Arabic for valley. It's a particularly um, important biodiversity area, the mountainous terrain, the constant flow of water um, has created an environment that's now been recognized by UNESCO. This is the area of Jordan that has the highest population of hyenas and they have been known to uh, attack people but it's very rare. I read a like an actual academic journal the other day, I just skimmed through it. I think it was something like eight out of 14 caves in the area had some evidence of hyenas. The obvious evidence for a hyena is there's bones within the entrance to the cave. They do dig their own um, holes, but as you've seen, whoa, as you've seen, there's so many, uh, you know, cave systems around here that um, they use those. So I might put that away, put the camera away, because it's a little bit sketchy recording here. And we are just straight back into it. And you can see how steep it is. You see so many things that you don't know what they are when you're walking in, like, in parts unknown. Like, why is there a cactus farm here? <laughs> uh, voiceover now. <laughs> These cacti produce the cactus pear or prickly pear, 
as a hardy, quality fruit which requires minimal agronomic input, i.e. soil and crop management, it's an ideal crop for lower-income rural communities in dry areas. Look who's scrumping again. You can see they're just, even just rotting on the vine. I think this is a failed crop. I can find the odd one here and there. Ah. They're going to waste. I'll have a couple, couple toms. Woohoo! It's amazing the little things that can get you excited. Oh, gold mine. Tomato gold mine. Scrumpington Barnes. I have to look that up. I am, I'm pretty sure it's scrumping. Is the actual dictionary word for stealing fruit. And we can't see the uh, cliff and the path's a bit, it's a bit zigzagging all over the place and it's a bit hard to follow. Couldn't figure out up there if this was like another cliff, but it looks like this isn't a cliff, but you can see how they just like suddenly just like fall off. At least it's dry in the rain, this would have been so dangerous. Yeah, in the rain it would be uh. really hard. But that's our campsite down there somewhere. There should be a spring down there, so we might be able to get a wash in. Yeah, it's so beautiful here. You can really understand why they picked this place to do the Bible. <laughs> Around here. Let's see how Amy makes it across the babbling brook. Not a strong start. Are you alright? Did you go into the thistle? I pricked my finger. Oh. Her bag's actually not that like, heavy, if anyone's wondering. It looks like it's full of stuff. That's because basically it's full of crisps. <laughs> it's full of crisps and croissant. Mountain goat. Oh, it's coming straight for me. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, f***ing That is no joke. Anyway, I don't want to bother him. You can see a cave just up in there. There's a load of them up there. Hyena territory. They hide in caves, but also they hide in like dense thickets and ditches just to escape sort of the uh, the sun of the day. So they could also be, you know, in these sorts of areas. Rare occasions, it's been known for hyenas to actually integrate with wolf packs, uh, which is really interesting considering they're kind of like, you know, completely different species. And the hyena can be about 55 to 60 kilograms, the bigger ones. Uh, it was the same way as Amy, she just said in the background. <laughs> they can actually be tamed and trained similar to a dog. Uh, and in fact, the ancient Egyptians used to do it. And they used to um, use them hunting. You can imagine the hyenas roaming this landscape. The thing I would say is like, I've read almost exclusively that they're scavengers and that they, they, you know, they scavenge on carcasses. But we saw a few carcasses, but that was like a couple of weeks ago. I've not seen anything in this area. That's my stop spiders coming on me. The swoop in front method invented in Australia. Well, you just do little circles. And that stops them. <laughs> Nothing like a relaxing swim at the end of the day. So many flies as well. <laughs> oh, I don't know if spiders or flies. This is so fun. I'm having such fun. This looks a little bit more like it. Oh. <laughs> what do you know what, what, what I do? I jumped. Yeah. Don't, don't land on your bad ankle. It's so smooth. <laughs> Look at these flies, they're so weird. They're so confident. Look, I'll go right up to them. <laughs> they don't care. They don't really care. Look, look at this one on their shoulders. <laughs> oh, so, such confidence. Where do they get it from, these flies? There's spiders everywhere as well, by the way. This one swims. Look, he swims! This one swims. Look, he swims.
Now we're here early in the morning just to see if there's some bones in this cave. Hyena hunting. No hyenas in this one. Oh, disappointing. Oh, Amy's all the way down there, watching disapprovingly as I get mauled by a hyena. We can't give up because like Amy said, we've not got an excuse. We've not got any injuries. So it's just tiredness. And that's no reason to quit. Isn't that right, Amy? Yep. So we just keep, keep, keep on keeping on. Keep on and scudge on. What? Keep, keep calm and scudge on. Now that I'm a successful YouTuber, Maybe I'll make keep calm and scotch on stash. You mean merch? Merch, yeah. And then all my followers can buy keep calm and scotch on t shirts. And we'll make literally millions. That'd be funny. You got fire in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Shepherd stopped us getting mauled. Daily, daily dog diaries over here. Mm. <clears throat> Amy's come up with a new technique actually when we do get attacked, which is to use her whistle. Mm. <laughs> the whistle just like really throws them off. <laughs> They're like, wait, what was that? <laughs> they were like fully attacking us. About ten of them was the other day, and Amy blew a whistle. <laughs> And it just like totally bamboozled them. Yeah. So we, got, we got whistles on our bags. Yeah. We were just down there where that shepherd was. <laughs> this is where he's living, obviously. You can see his house over there, right in the distance. And then, I mean, what? How do things grow? They're lemon trees. Yeah, do you want to grab them on the lime, I think? They're green. You reckon I can? I'm sure you won't miss one. You make a very good point there. Where the hell are they getting the water? I mean, look at this. Lemons. Nothing. <laughs> I know I said yesterday that because we live in Australia, that we're better suited to the hot. But it is hot. <laughs> We're dying. You still got flies in your face. Oh, no. <laughs> A few moments later. Well, that was one of the hardest things I've ever done. We're nearly at the top now, but that was really difficult in the heat. We're not going to hike again during the midday sun. Any mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. And Amy. We nearly had some tears there, but we're all right, aren't we? We kind of fucked up a little bit with the water situation. We were gonna not carry too much water, so we didn't have to carry up the mountain. So we drank at the bottom, the load. And then halfway up, the well, well, the spring that was meant to be there, we couldn't find it where that shepherd was earlier. So I'm only carrying three liters on me so that we can get down the other side with some, if we need some water. Well, we'll have water to do that. And also we can sort of replenish after doing this. Um, but it means we have to do this whole mountain without any water. <laughs> Made it. Can't begin to say how wet it is when you get up on top of here. It's like a plateau of grass. Oh. Amy's really suffering. <laughs> but there's like a plateau all up here on the cliff. It's a really strange experience. But look at my newest invention for quick cover when there's none. It's really good. I invented it. It's good, isn't it? It's really good. Clips on there with one peg down there, another peg down here, then a couple rocks. These loop round, bish bash bosh, we have a little cover. 
How impressed are you? I'm f***ing Bear grills now. I've been out here three weeks. Here we are. At the end of the day. Camping at, what's it called? Magdalene Ruins? Magdalene. And we've got a lovely view. But it was tough. The hardest day for Really, sure. really tough. Hardest day. I've got a headache. I'm so dehydrated. But um, We went moments of severe dehydration. So there you go. Yeah, we got 21 kilometers, but a thousand ascent. And that a thousand ascent was in, in one, one go. go. Um, that was tough. This, there was a nice, lovely little shepherd that came along here and asked us if we wanted to stay the night. And have food. And, uh, and have food with them. But I know it's bad, but I just, I'm so tired. I don't want to socialise. I don't want to sleep in like some shepherd's tent, like right next to a sheep. I just, do you know what I mean? It's not going to be a nice night's sleep. As generous as it are, is, I just think I'll be more comfortable in our own space. We got into the town and the guy was really friendly gave us a bag of ice. So we've actually managed to we just ice, ice our, our feet, feet, ice our ankles. And we had icy drinks. He's also given me a frozen, that bottle of water in there is frozen. Oh, it's defrosting now. I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna get in the tent, have some food and go to sleep. We didn't record a lot today because it's just basically walking through little towns along roads. It wasn't too exciting. Um, but yeah, we found that like today, like it's 21k, but been flat so far. Yeah, today's been pretty, it's been flat. But yeah, we're finding that like it's kind of irrelevant how big the treks are because they're all pretty long anyway. But way more about like what the grade is and how steep it is and how much you're climbing. Would you agree? Yeah. It makes a way, way bigger difference. Over this hill over here, that's where we're going to see Karak Castle, which is that awesome. Uh, Crusader Castle tomorrow, which is going to be really exciting. There are, as you can see up there, 200 foot drops. In fact, that is the path. That's the path up there. And what's amazing about this is Karak Castle's up there. You can really imagine how difficult it would be to actually approach the castle. An extremely perilous climb up there. Yeah, we're not mm. falling off that today. <sighs> what does that mean? Oh, is that what it means? I've never heard of that before. <laughs> don't trip, don't trip. The thing is, after 18 kilometers, you do slowly start to lose your legs a little bit. You start dragging your feet a bit, yeah. This room was 17 pounds. And it's pretty good, it's good. We've got two single beds, you may be wondering, why have they got two single beds? Aren't they newlyweds? Wow. That's part of the reason we've been together for eight years. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but the, the real reason is because this one came with a view of the castle. And I'm more about, more about a view of the castle than I am sleeping in the same bed as Amy. <laughs> we sleep in a small temporary night together. Yeah, so now so space I actually is okay. quite enjoy being in a separate bed. Do you sometimes? <laughs> you, you didn't like it in Thailand. 